This is Her Confidence Her Way Podcast, episode 40. Are you feeling not confident? Are you telling yourself, no, you're not good enough? You know you can do more. And you know you're better than who you are right now. Ladies, it's not time for you to give up on who you are. Welcome to Her Confidence Her Way Podcast. I am Emiko Rasmussen, a confidence building coach and host of this podcast. Each week, I will bring you guests or lessons that will help you to break through your limiting beliefs, fears, and barriers so that you can start building your own confidence and do what you really want to do without worrying about someone else's opinion. We all have a gifted talent that no one can copy. And we're here to let our talent shine. So don't limit yourself. Are you ready to begin your confidence breakthrough journey and discover your true self? Let's go. Today's episode is brought to you by Audible.com. I love learning and I love reading about self-help, female leadership, and any professional development books. But I'm a mom of two and I'm also a full-time working mom. And I got no time to sit down and enjoy some tea and read in a quiet room. Lucky me, I found Audible and I'm loving it. And I have been a user for over a year now. And I just cannot live without it now. You can listen to your favorite book during your commute, while you're cooking, cleaning, or folding your laundry at home. Or even while you're working out. For you, yes you... Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to get you the opportunity to check out their service. Get a free Audible download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash the real global voice or you can go to my website and click on the Audible 30 days trial. I love free stuff and you should definitely try it. Hey ladies, welcome back. I am super excited to welcome you for the season three of Her Confidence Her Way podcast. My name is Emiko Rasmussen and I am your host. Today, I was thinking, what am I going to do? This is like the first episode of season three and there are so many things that I wanted to share. So I decided that I'm just going to do a little intro And then talk a little bit more about this Her Confidence Her Way podcast history and where I am heading to and what my mission is all about. All right, so first I am going to talk about a little bit about myself. I know I have done an intro, which is the episode, I think it's 000. So if you really want to learn more about me, you can go back and listen. But I would like to just share right here if you're okay with me. All right, so I'm a mom of two and I have been married with my husband for 10 years. Yes, 10 years. That's a long, long, long time. I really do appreciate my husband and I really love him. And I know I don't really talk about my husband on on this podcast and I I don't think my husband listened (laughs) to this podcast. But um, I just wanted to make sure that he knows that I... He mean, he means a lot to me, and I really love him. So I love you, babe. Anyway, so and I have a dog. I uh, <laughs> his name is Romeo, and he's a miniature pincher. Just a fun fact about me: when I was little, when I was in Japan, I was really scared of my dog. I mean, not my dog, <laughs> scared of dogs. So like I, when I see dogs. I would run, like I would run away. I couldn't pet them. If I have, if I pet them, I have to like really wash my hand. Like I, that's what my mom used to tell me. Like, wow, I can't believe you have a dog now. Like you used to like scared of dogs. So <laughs> just a fun fact about me. All right. So I am originally from Japan. Well, obviously Yokohama city. I moved to US in 2003 to get my degree. It's a bachelor's degree. After that, after I graduated, I have worked one year with a logistics company at the border. It's like right next to the Mexico and San Diego border. 
After that, after my visa had expired, I have worked in a Japanese company. It's a very traditional, big company. I wanted to make sure that I have a professional experience in Japan as well. So that's something that I purposely did it. And I got my,、uh, I got married with my husband. He actually, we met each other when we were like 16 and he was maybe 15 or maybe 14. I don't even know how young we are. But that was、uh, due to, thanks to San Diego and Yokohama Sisters City Society, I had an opportunity to do a Exchange program like three weeks, and that's where I actually met. I obviously I didn't date him when when we first met, but we did keep a really good relationship, and we finally got married. So, surprise! <laughs> and yeah, I moved back to the States,、uh, San Diego,、uh, in 2007. As you have noticed, that so before I used to work with a logistics company, and even with this Japanese company. I, I did a,、um, whatchamacallit, it's an overseas sales logistics department. So I did very similar to what I, I did while I was in, in US. But when I came back, I was actually thinking about what I really want to do. And I met this amazing international student advisor at Cal State San Marcos. Her name is Danielle.、Uh, Danielle. And she was just amazing, and I, I knew I wanted to be like her. So I said, I want to work in a higher education industry, aka meaning or school, it,、um, it's in a university. So I had been in the industry for over 11 years with six years of management experience now. Through this University that I work with, which is Ashworth University, and I got my master's degree in organizational management. And I am very, <laughs> I, I didn't plan it, but it was nice. It was the company as one of the benefits that I could get my degree for free. So why not, right? I didn't really have a big meaning or purpose. But at the same time, I felt like I needed to prove to the world that I have a master's degree. And that's something that I was very insecure. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I did learn a lot. I actually majored in international business, so I have learned a lot. So definitely, I am so thankful for the company, and also、um, I have learned a lot. So it was a great experience. But the reason why I Got my master's degree, but my main reason was definitely to really prove myself that I have something extra to write on my resume. <laughs> okay, what else? I am very active at my daughter's school, so I have two girls, and I, am, I do volunteer, and so I'm a class helper. And I, this year, I have signed up to be a room parent. So, room parent is something that, it's, of course, it's a volunteer. And then,、um, pretty much, it, you are the leader of the parents of the room. So, if the teacher needs some help, I will jump in and come and help. And if there are some events, like for example, it is October right now, so the teacher is planning on some fun activities for Halloween. So, the teacher will need lots of help organizing the parents and asking them to come and volunteer and all that. So, I am the leader of the parents. So, That's called Room Parent. I also do a volunteer for this amazing organization called San Diego and Yokohama Sisters, Sisters City Society, I, which I have mentioned earlier. This organization was the one which gave me an opportunity to come to the United States and where I also met my husband. So, definitely, I, I really love their mission, and that's something that I really wanted to contribute my, my time and My passion towards this organization, so that's something that I do as well. And what else? <laughs> oh, yes, and on the side, I do this coaching and this podcast. <laughs> Phew, that's a lot, right? But I truly I, I enjoy a lot of what I do, and this is something that I'm very passionate about. it. So, 
I hope you'll find something that you're really passionate about it that you can do without getting paid. Obviously, this podcast, I'm not being paid, but I am here. I'm very passionate about helping Japanese, especially working women. And here is my mission. So, what am I doing here? Right? So, those who are new to this podcast, I know you're wondering, like, okay, well, I got. I know who Emiko is, kind of. Okay, so then what am I gonna get through this podcast? My mission of the podcast is through this podcast, empower, motivate, and inspire Japanese working women to discover their gifted talent and provide them a start point to start believing themselves so that they can be confident about their true self and start living a meaningful life. このポッドキャストではアメリカに来てコミュニケーションの壁にぶつかって本当の自分を発揮できない。もっと自分を信じてやりたい仕事に挑戦したい。でも私には無理だ。英語を活かして仕事をしたい。でも私の英語力じゃきっとダメでしょう。という悩みを持つ女性の方々を応援する番組です。アメリカ・サンディエゴから私が言葉や文化の壁を乗り越え、アメリカ・海外で働く女性をインタビューし、自分のギフテッドタレント、強みを生かし、自信を持って、自分らしく生きるワークライフについて、アメリカで働くキャリアウーマンに重要なスキルについて学んでいきます。このポッドキャストでは、たくさんのリスナーさんからいただいた、もっと日本人が英語で話をするのを聞いてみたいというご希望に応えて、ゲストの方に英語でもインタビューをしているバイリンガルのポッドキャストです。OK。I would like to just kind of do a, a little bit of recap of what I have done so far. So, I have about 20 episodes per season. So, I have season one, which I started as the Real Global Voice podcast, and I have introduced inspiring women around the globe. And the reason why I changed the title is because it's actually, <laughs> when you write this title in Japanese, it's easy to say it. But if you are trying to say it in English, the real global voice, it's pretty difficult. And also, I kind of wanted to know,、uh, I, I knew what, I, what kind of direction that I wanted to go to to serve、uh, the, the listeners of this podcast. So, the season two, I have shifted my focus. On how women are overcoming their barriers and fears and building their soft confidence in the US. So that's where the、uh, Her Confidence Her Way podcast was released. Or it's still the same.、Um, I don't want to be too technical, but RSS, RSS feed, it's still the same thing. I just changed the title. And season three, here we go. So we're in season three. And this is、uh, episode, what is it? Episode 40. So, what, where am I going to the, where am I heading? So, what is the direction? Definitely, it's, I, <laughs> so I, I went back to Japan for a little bit to visit my family. And my main focus, I decided exactly what kind of、um, focus that I want to do for this season three while I was in Japan. So the focus on the, I'm going to focus on tips and tools for Japanese professional women or career women or working women, whatever you want to call, to perform, perform and communicate better in a cross cultural working environment. I know professional women sounds cool. And I'm gonna leave it that, but it's, it's pretty much like you and me who is working for a company. Or I know this podcast,、uh, listeners, I know I have、um, a, a lot of ladies who are building their own business as well. All right, so cross cultural working environment is something that I just mentioned, right? I wanted to talk about this a little bit. So, The reason why I also switched the gear of saying global, there are so many different meanings.、Um, and I know there are a lot of people who are talking about the meaning of global. And I, I would like to talk about it, but not in this episode. But I think, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice here. I think、um, the, the working environment that I'm in, I think it's more appropriate. Appropriate for me to say cross cultural working environment because although, so I work for this company and this is not a, a Japanese company or anything, it's just a American corporate company. 
Within that, though, although they're all Americans, although there are some、um, people from different countries, they have a different cultural background. So I do notice that there are some cultural.、Uh, Difference and some miscommunications and all of that, and I'm talking about culture, meaning you know, of course, like the Japanese culture, Korean culture, Chinese culture, or American culture, or whatever, and also the culture itself, meaning like the Japanese culture as well. So I'll definitely、uh, dig dig deep into this topic as well. And I am so excited to tell you that I already have amazing guests lined up. So looking forward to those interview. Episode as well. Also for this season, you may hear more about my solo episode, which many I, I did the little survey and many of them requested to have a solo show. So I know this is something I've been trying to do. And season two, I did a little bit more, but I think I didn't do a good job. So season three, I will definitely do more of、uh, the lessons or the solo shows. Okay, are you ready to? <laughs> well, I mean, this is part of the episode, but the other part of the story that I'm wanting to share is about the trip to Japan. I went back to Japan and visit my family, and also my my real main reason that I went back was because of my my friend winning. She is so. I when I was in high school, I was in a dance team, and she was the last one to get married. Not in a bad way, <laughs> no. So、uh, I I knew that if I didn't go, I would be missing out this opportunity. And this is something I told myself when I get married, got married with my husband. I knew that I will be missing so many of these events, such as. Weddings in Japan, and I knew I'm not going to be able to attend many of the、uh, many of them. So this was really my last one, and and also she asked us, uh, as、uh, as the dance team members, to do a like a performance. Um, in Japanese we call it yokyo, right? So. <laughs> When I was in high school,、um, a singer called Morning Musume was really, really popular, and we actually debuted with the morning. We used their song for our dance performance、uh, at Bunkasai、uh, School Festival. So we decided to do a happy summer wedding. So we bought this like belly dancing, really cute costume, and we did the happy summer wedding dance together. And it was so much fun, and there's actually a story for that, so I'll definitely share. But yeah, I I had really fun,、um, and I am so lucky that I had an opportunity to dance again with my my team,、uh, with my dance team. <laughs> so it was like seventeen years. It has been seventeen years since we danced together. <laughs> But yes, it was an amazing、um, memory there. So today I wanted to share about this、um, story that had happened on the airplane. It was actually on the way to Japan. So I left from San Diego and then to Japan. So what happened was that,、um, <laughs> so my daughter had my younger one had she put her shoes in the little fishnet area. It's like you know, right in front of your seat. There's like a stuff that you can. Put Put on, put in, where they have like magazines and stuff. So my daughter decided to put her shoes in there, and then I didn't realize. But when it, when we went to the bathroom and I looked at her shoes and it was so dirty, it was like ink all over. So I was like, "What did you do?" And I was kind of mad about her,、uh, mad mad at at her because I had no idea what she did, you know. And then later on, I went back to her seat, and for some reason, I decided to reach something, and I put my hand into a fishnet, like a little pocket sack, and my hand got dirty. And I was like, "Oh, wait a minute! This is the same, like you know, it's it's like ink." So then I checked, and then it actually somebody left a pen. It's like a bowl point pen, and I think the the ink got leaked, and it was just all over. And I wasn't mad at all, and I I just told the flight attendants, hey, just an FYI, there's a pen and there's a a, a leak leak 
ink is leaking and I'm not mad. I, I just wanted to let you know so that way, you know, next time um, when you guys are cleaning, you may want to just clean a little bit more. And the flight attendant actually went above and beyond. And she took my daughter's shoes. She didn't have to do that. And she said that she would clean for us. And I said, no, 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 that's okay. My daughter's shoes is already dirty. So no worries. That's okay. If I could get some uh, like a hot towel, like Oshibori, then uh, it would be all good. And then she's like, no, 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 please. And, um, and then she took you know, her shoes and it came back with like super clean. She actually used a toothpaste and just brushed my daughter's shoes. So it turned out to be like so much cleaner than how it was before. So I was like, wow, what did she just do? She didn't have to do that, right? So I decided to, as a woman, for me, it's very important to recognize someone's great work, right? So I decided to write a letter and I also asked the flight attendant, her name is Yoshikawa-san, and I asked Yoshikawa-san, like, who do you report? Who is your supervisor? And I asked because I wanted to wanted to give that letter to her supervisor so that she's been recognized. And uh, later on, her supervisor came and she had, because uh, I, I gave it to her, and she she read and she was like, wow, we have never received such a nice letter like this. I, I cannot wait to share with the team. And I think they shared. And then later on, Yoshikawa-san came back and and she also gave me a letter. She wrote me a letter back and said, um, it said it was, it became one of her mer- memorable flight. She said she had never received a letter like this. And just, she was kept going on. And I had to really stop for a second and and asked myself, well, did she just write she had never received a thank you letter? That like blown my mind. Because to me, it's important to really show the appreciation. And although it's her job, she actually went above and beyond. And I know this isn't the first time for her to do these things, right? So listen what I have learned from this experience. So number one, it's word thank you. Sounds really simple, but it has a great meaning, which can also impact so many ways. When you're in a situation like this, it is very important that we support each other and show that she or he did a great job and you share, right? When I was a student, um, so when when I was a coordinator at work where I was still working with students, I used to receive thank you letter from our students and the handwriting ones. And I I was really happy to receive those letters. And, but to me, at the same time, I was like, well, but this is my job and I didn't really do something special. But for somebody else, that changed whatever I did, changed her, changed the student's life. So, you know, don't underestimate what you do because whatever you do is really impacting other people in both positive and a negative way. So as women tend to really underestimate, right? So what can we do? We definitely can support each other and recognize their effort. So the flight attendant did an amazing job and I wanted to make sure that she was recognized. And I really want you to do the same thing. I don't care if you stop and listen right now, but can you please take a moment and send a thank you letter or thank you card or whatever show appreciation in so in a different way, whatever the way, there's no one way where the credit is due. This is going to be your action item today. So you can stop right now and then you can come back and listen later. Um, but I want you to write a thank you letter and then send it to somebody or hand it to somebody, please. And this is just like a very coincident. As I was about to record this episode, I happened to receive this very nice message from Aiko. Uh, she was also my wonderful guest from, she's actually from season one. 
She goes, Hi, Emiko. How are you? I just wanted to tell you that I progressed and started talking in front of a group of people in person. I always remember your points and tips about speaking with confidence. I wanted to tell you thank you for that advice that you gave me six months ago, maybe even longer than six months ago. I am taking small steps, but still I am moving forward. I hope you're doing great. Take care. Wow. You know, this message really <laughs> made my day. I obviously I did not expect, right? And I was just coming back from Japan and trying to put my, I guess, my focus back to this podcast and doing everything. And, and she sent me this message. So that really helped me. And that gave me, it was just like a dose of motivation. Like, all right, this is the reason why I'm here. And this is the reason why I am doing what I am doing. <laughs> right? So. Please, you guys, I want you to take a moment to write a letter or just send a nice message, thank you message to somebody who are impacting your life. The other story or the lesson that I have learned from this experience is her attitude. So, Yoshikawa san's attitude. She was working as if she owned that airplane. She had such a great attitude and Can you think if so? Those who are working,、um, can you think as if you own that company when you're working? Because if you have that mindset that you know, I own this company and my mission and the company's mission is really align, the attitude really c h a n g e right? Yoshikawa san, that flight attendant, she didn't have to do all that, she could just say, Oh, I am very sorry. You know, we will make sure this, not, this is not going to happen next time. That's it. She could totally do that. But no, she went above and beyond. And she, I, I really thought that, wow, you know, she, she is so great. What she's doing is、um, something that, you know, she's really passionate about. And yeah, she is really connecting with her, with the company's value. With this reason, I love JAL. I'm not a sponsor for JAL or anything, but I will continue to use JAL, which is Japan Airline, for my trip everywhere. So, yay, JAL! <laughs> All right, so within her confidence, her way community, we talk a lot about our gifted talent. And I have created a new worksheet for you, and this is the Worksheet that I actually use for my coaching clients as well. And you are getting this for free. Obviously, for for coaching session, I will talk more about you know what it is and how you can use it and、um, all that. So,、uh, what you're going to find out is going to be what are your gifted talent, obviously. <laughs> so,、uh, I will make sure to put a link. So that way you can get that worksheet for free. For those who have、um, previously signed up, I still recommend you to actually sign up and get it because I have updated it and it made it even better. So if you want to check it out, you can do that by going to my website. And I am also going to put a, put a bit.ly link. So please. Please go to my、um, or join our community so that you can find the link. Or you can find it from my website as well. I will put that in a show note so you will see that. It's going to be under episode 40. All right, so that is all for today. And I am very excited to share all the interviews that I have already done so far. Amazing guests that are lined up. And as I mentioned earlier, I. I will be doing more solo s h o w this season just because that is something that you guys have been asking, and I, I know that I need to work on it. <laughs> so, yes, I will do that as well. And so, call to action remember to get your worksheet, join the community, and what is the last one? Oh, yes, <laughs> oh, geez, and write a thank you note. That is the most important. 
have a wonderful day, and I will catch with you for the next episode. Bye bye. Thank you so much for spending the time with me today. Make sure to subscribe to Her Confidence Her Way podcast and leave a review, which will help this podcast to be more visible so that other women can find this podcast easily. For free monthly newsletter, free private Her Confidence Her Way community, and learn how you can get free weekly lesson to help you build your self confidence, go to www.theemmystyle.com. Ladies, you don't need a permission from someone else to believe yourself. Just be you, because you are amazing. Let's support each other and keep on building your confidence.